Hello, my name is Ms. Midha, and today we're going to be focusing on the following question. How do we relate the features of the graph of a trigonometric function to the terms in its equation? And what we're going to be doing is a card sort on Desmos. So hopefully you have received the code and you are going to student.desmos.com right now. And once you've done that, you should see something that looks like this. Now I'm going to explain what to do for this activity in a moment. But the first thing I'm gonna ask you to do is just click on this button right here that I'm hovering over. This button is enter full screen. So once you do that, you'll notice you have a lot more space to work with, okay? And if your cards are still kind of smushed together, feel free to move them around just so you have more space. And it's you know, definitely, definitely easier to see everything that way. Now the instructions say that you're gonna match each of the following equations to a graph. Now you'll notice that there are four graphs and six equations. So what does that mean? There are some graphs that have two equations, okay? All of these equations are gonna be used. There's not any sort of extra stuff that's gonna be left over. So since there are only four graphs and six equations, there will be some graphs that have more than one equation. So just keep that in mind, okay? Now, while you're matching these up, I want you to think about certain strategies that you're using to figure out why certain equations match with each graph, right? There's a couple of different strategies that you can use, um, but while you're matching them, really sort of think in your mind, like, okay, well, how did I figure out this was correct? And how did I figure this one out? Um, so that's your task for the day. And I'm gonna also just really quickly show you how to um, sort the cards, how to kind of like pair them together for those of you who haven't seen Desmos before. Um, and then you can go ahead and get started. So say I want to match this equation, y equals two sine theta minus three. Say I wanna match this up with graph D, okay? What I would do is I would hold, I would, I would click on this equation, y equals two sine theta minus three, and I would drag it over towards graph D. Now I'm gonna drag it over until it kind of hovers or overlaps graph D, and you'll notice that there's a blue border around that graph now. Once I see that blue border, I just let go. And now the cards have been sorted, right? So I take that equation, I drag it over to the graph I wanna match it with, let it hover over and it's you know clearly a blue, um, a blue border that's popped up. And then I let go and they're sorted together. If I wanna take them apart, I just grab the equation or the graph and I just drag it down, okay? So that's how you can um, pair different cards up in a Desmos activity. And again, you're gonna pause this video and take as long as you need to match each equation to a specific graph, reminding yourself that some graphs may match up with two equations. And also think about the strategies that you're using. Once you think you have it, go ahead and unpause the video and we will review the answers. All right, so these are the card sorts. These are the answers you should have gotten. Now, there are a couple of ways that you may have gone about figuring out what equations go with what. Probably the first strategy, right? The first strategy that comes to mind is sort of thinking about you know, strategic inputs that you would put in for theta, right? Like say, I'm gonna say that theta is equal to zero or theta is equal to pi over two. If I do that, right, once I plug values in for my theta, I'll start to notice what outputs I get. Right, I'll start to notice that like, oh, if I plug in zero for theta in this equation, two sine theta or two sine zero minus three, I'll end up getting negative three. And so right away, I can sort of start to eliminate different graphs. Once I know that, well, when my theta is at zero, my y value is at negative three, I kind of actually can get rid of all of these other graphs, right? I immediately know, oh, okay, it matches up with this graph A. So you can do that for sure for, for almost all of these, right? I can plug in a strategic input here for theta. I could do pi over two, or I could do, again, I could do zero. Um, for negative cosine theta, I could do pi over two or pi and see that, you know, if I plug in uh, theta, if I plug in pi for theta, negative cosine pi would end up actually giving me one. And again, right away, I can see, oh yeah, my pi right here, it's at one. All right, so that's how I know that cosine of theta is going to be matched up with this graph. So that's one strategy that you could use. Again, plugging in a value for theta and seeing what output you get. Helps you identify all of these graphs. Okay, another strategy that you could use 
is to look specifically for maximums or minimums, right? Looking for maxes and mins of the graphs and trigonometric expressions. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I look at cosine theta plus pi over two, right? If I think about the maximum value, say when theta is equal to three pi over two, when theta is equal to three pi over two, I know that this function, right, this equation, y equals cosine theta plus pi over two, is going to take a maximum value of one. Okay, well, how does that help me? Well, if I think about it, if I look at my graph, if I know that at three pi over two, that equation is going to take a maximum value at one, I can see right here, oh yeah, three pi over two, I've got a max of one. That means that this has to match graph C. Similarly, if I look at three sine, where is it? Three sine theta minus two, I know that this equation is gonna take a maximum value of one when theta is equal to pi over two. So again, it's gonna have a maximum value of one when theta is equal to pi over two. Lo and behold, if I look right here, pi over two, I can see it hits a max at one, right? So this one has to match graph B. A third strategy and this one's definitely a little bit more abstract. A third strategy that you can use is really looking at like the structure of the equation to just sort of notice important properties of the graphs, right? So what am I talking about? Well, if I look at the graph of y equals sine theta minus pi over two, so this one right here, what do I know about this graph? I know a lot of things about this graph, but I know that this graph this equation rather, this equation, sine theta minus pi over two is kind of like a translation. It's a translate, not kind of, it is a translation of y equals sine theta, right? It's translated right by pi over two, right? It's translated to the right by pi over two. So if I look at this graph right here, I can see that that is essentially what's happening here, right? I can see that this curve right here is my y equals sine theta, but it's really been translated to the right by pi over two. So immediately that can also tell me, oh yeah, y equals sine theta minus pi over two is gonna match my graph D, right? Again, because it is literally translating my very lovely y equals sine theta graph right here, it's translating it to the right by pi over two, which I can see by this little guy over here. Okay, what about another one? So if I look at this one, y equals sine theta plus pi. Okay, let me think about this. Let me think about this graph. Let me think about this equation. If I look at the graph, let me just look at the graph first instead of the equation. If I look at this graph, I can see that this graph is a sine graph, my y equals sine theta right here, y equals sine theta, but my sine theta graph has been translated. This has also been translated right? This has been translated to the right by pi, but I also know it's been translated to the left by pi. I know we can't see it, but since we know that there's this pattern that exists that is periodic, I know that my sine theta function really is going to start this imaginary part right here at negative pi. So I'm saying that the sine theta function has been translated to the left by pi. So what does that mean? That means that this equation y equals sine theta plus pi matches graph C. So what's kind of cool about this like last sort of strategy, um, it's definitely more abstract, but it sort of helps us think about how the graphs relate, right? Via vertical, horizontal translations, sometimes vertical stretches. Um, if we just sort of think about our y equals sine theta and our y equals cosine theta graphs, it really kind of does help us see, oh yeah, this one is very similar, but there's a translation here, or it looks like my cosine theta graph, but there's a vertical stretch and things like that. Um, so what's great about this strategy is that it could be used not only to identify um, each match, but also you know, to produce the graphs themselves. So to summarize what we did here, we had four different graphs and six different equations. We had to match each of these equations to a graph, noting that again, some of these graphs have more than one equation, like these two right here. And we had to figure out different strategies, right? What were some strategies that we used to sort these? Well, the first strategy was evaluating the function for strategic inputs, such as theta is equal to zero, theta is equal to pi over two, 
and you know, eliminating possibilities, helping to identify the correct graphs. Another strategy that you may use, identifying the maxes and the minimums of the graphs and the trigonometric functions. And then finally, another strategy, a third and final strategy, is thinking about the midline, amplitude, and horizontal translations, both graphically and equation form.